which was this your favorite? <laughs> So today we're going to be ranking Diana Wynne Jones books. I know I called this video my top 10 favorite Diana Wynne Jones books, but that's kind of a lie because I've only read 10 of them. So I'm basically just going to be ranking them from like my least favorite to my favorite. There's Adrian. You haven't seen her in a while. Maybe she will come back. I'm going to be using Goodreads for it though because I didn't want to like lug all my books out here because some of them are like not like special edition but they are older covers and copies like this one I do have this one with me so I didn't want to like I didn't want it getting ruined but I will be using Goodreads and I'll try to put them up on the screen my editing program is like more advanced than iMovie but I swear I can't just like put things up on the screen easily I need to learn how to but it's something I don't know how to do so also for those of you who don't know Diana Wynne Jones wrote the Howl's Moving Castle book which inspired the movie and she's a brilliant writer um some of the books on this list I don't actually really like a lot but the good, the good thing about Diana Wynne Jones is that all of her books are so different from one another that if you don't like one odds are you will find one that you like because she wrote over like over a hundred books. I'm, I'm planning on reading all of them eventually, but she wrote over a hundred across multiple genres. So once again, if you read her books after this and you don't like one, definitely give more a try because there are so many. Um, but starting at number 10 with my least favorite is Castle in the Air, which is the sequel, the second book to Howl's Moving Castle. And I don't think a lot of people know this, but Howl's Moving Castle is actually a three book series. I wasn't the biggest fan of the series, which I'll get into in a minute, but Castle in the Air is probably my least favorite. And I'm basing this off of how I felt when I first read them, by the way, because there are elements to Castle in the Air that I did genuinely enjoy, but overall it wasn't my favorite. I think that's actually a kind of, oh gosh, I thought I saw like a bug, sorry. <laughs> I think Castle in the Air is a common one not to like. I know a lot of people have talked about how weight is portrayed in it, like heavier versus thin, and how there's like kind of, the only word I can literally think of for this is weight to those things. But I, it did bother me a little bit, but that's actually not why I disliked the book. There were parts to it, like I think there were a good 100 pages that I genuinely really enjoyed. I love the main characters. Well, I like the main character and the soldier he hangs out with during it. I think both of them are really interesting. But I hated the ending. Most of the Diana Wynne Jones books that I've read, even if I didn't like them, the end makes up for it. Castle in the Air was kind of the opposite, where it wasn't my favorite. It took me a month to read it, which is kind of slow for me nowadays. And the ending was terrible. Like, I did not care. I didn't want to finish it, but I did, and it was bad. So that's number 10. Number 9 is a little difficult for me to decide, but I think it's actually Howl's Moving Castle, and I know that's terrible. And I know that's a very uncommon opinion to have. Those are our neighbor dogs. I know a lot of people really liked it, and that's fine. I was not the biggest fan of it. I think the movie was better organized, and I wish that the book had more romance throughout the whole thing. It really, There's really no romance in the book until the last chapter, and what's funny about that is that I'm not like a fan of romance stories. I don't really like them that much, but Howl's Moving Castle was such a good one. I wish that, like the, the last chapter of Howl's Moving Castle is kind of like the perfect chapter, so I wish that the rest of it was better. Also, um, Miyazaki had such a good idea in cutting out like half the cast of Howl's Moving Castle because there are too many characters in the book and I don't care about most of them. Like they cut her sisters down to, she has two in the book, they cut it down to one in the movie. And then Wizard Solomon kind of was like three different characters in a way. And I felt like cutting down on her character was such a good idea. It just overall the movie was so much better. Okay, then number eight is actually House of Many Ways, which is the third book in the series. I really don't like the Howl's Moving Castle series. And once again, that is such a bummer because I love the movies and I was really looking forward to the books, but they just were not my favorites of hers. I also think she's written so many better books and it's kind of sad because I feel like people only read Howl's Moving Castle and whether they like or dislike it kind of determines if they read more of her books. 
And sometimes I think people only read Howl's Moving Castle and like Crestomancy. And she's written so many better books that it just kind of is a disappointment that people don't check out more for her writing. But House of Many Ways was my favorite in the series overall. I have this thing sometimes when I'm reading her books and they're all, I love her books so much, but I have this like issue where I'll, I feel like the story kind of fogs for me and it's just like it doesn't come into focus and it's not that I don't know if House of Many Ways did that it like kind of did a little bit for me but it was a very cute story but the ending kind of annoyed me again because it wasn't like a bad ending at all but the description up on the back of the book implied that there was this really important element that would come up in the rest of the story and that it's only mentioned in the last chapter. Also in both Castle in the Air and House of Many Ways, having Howl and Sophie in the books actually kind of ruined them for me because they had such a small, weird role in them. I feel like the books almost would have been better if they had just cut Howl and Sophie out completely, which is weird because it's their sequels, but they just like didn't, I don't know, I didn't love them in, in either book, especially House of Many Ways because Howl drove me insane. He was not endearing. He was just really annoying. The next on my list is Charmed Life from Crestomancy. That is one of the books where I felt like foggy kind of on the plot. And it's I think this is a me issue. I think I just need to work on like maybe not reading when I'm tired or just focusing a little bit better. But I felt like the, the plot did not come into focus for me at all. And I just kind of like read through this kind of once again, out of focus, fog of a book, and then it was over. And I was just like, what happened? And it wasn't bad. It is a very cute story. I've noticed with her books, I always prefer books of hers that take place in the real world and then have magic elements thrown in, which I think is why I don't like Howl's Moving Castle or Crestomancy as much as her other books, because I just, I don't know what it is about them, but when it's a solely fantasy world, it's just, I don't know, I don't like them as much. So Crestomancy wasn't my favorite. Um, I tried to read the second book and I didn't really like it either, so I, I eventually want to finish the series because there are six books, which is kind of, I don't know, it's just, I don't know if I'm ever going to finish them, but I want to read all her books, so I will try to, <laughs> but yeah, definitely not one of my favorites. I don't even know how many I just read. Okay, so number six probably be The Game. It's a novella. It was very short. It wasn't a bad book, but once again, I had that, like, fog feeling when I read it, where I just, like, the story just kind of happened, and then it was over, and I just didn't know how to feel about it, and I think some parts to it confused me. It was a cool book, though, don't get me wrong. Like, it's a really good book. It's just a little weird, and I think I don't know what it was about it, that I just didn't connect to a lot. I think I would I want to reread it eventually because I do feel like it is unfortunate that I didn't appreciate it more because it wasn't bad. It just was a little weird to me. Okay, so I think we're getting into my top five. I'm so sorry if I'm missing something. I may be. Um, I'm not very organized. This, I just should have just written this down on a list. I don't know why I'm doing it like this, but anyway. Number five for me is probably Archer's Goons, and this is kind of not a fair assessment because I'm literally still reading it, but I can just tell that it's either going to to remain in my top five or it's gonna switch with number four. I haven't decided because it depends on how this ends. But I really like it and it's so funny because it's Neil Gaiman's favorite book of Diana Wynne Jones and it's the one he read when he was younger which is what made me want to read it so badly. And I thought it would be more of like a boy book. Like it's from the cover too. It looks like this typical like 80s book. Like my dad said this looks like something he would have read when he was young which is also why I am using that MacGyver uh, bookmark. It's it's so good. <laughs> like, I just, I had such a different idea of what it would be about when I came into reading it, and it's so much better than I imagined. So, so far, this is number five. Number four is Aunt Maria, which, like I said, depending on how this book goes, may switch places, but I loved Aunt Maria. The, this was one of those books where I do feel like the plot came into focus for me, and I felt like it was so concise and organized, which is a little difficult sometimes with her books. Like, I do feel like with Howl's Moving Castle, especially, Especially, sometimes her books go all over the place and this one had such a clear message in it and it was good till the very end and it also kind of talked about like sexism it covered it so well and I really appreciated how it discussed sexism and like the battle of the sexes I don't know it was a good book I definitely recommend it am I getting into my top three I don't even know okay so number three top three um my number three third my third no, uh, number three is Time of the Ghost, and that is the first book that actually made me fall in love with her writing in general. I read it in like oh, four days, I think. It was amazing. It's a mystery kind of thriller book, and it is so good. I highly recommend it. It's a little 
dark, which I didn't love at, at some points. But overall, it was like the most amazing book. I don't even know. It basically, this girl pops into existence as a ghost. All she knows is that there was a horrible accident, but she has no idea who she is or what happened to her. And she figures out that she's one of four sisters, but she has no idea which sister she is. It's amazing. It's such, every time there's a mystery to a book, I like eat it up. So it was really good. Number two on the list is Dog's Body. And it is like kind of a sad animal book, but I don't know why I keep doing air quotes. Um, hi, speaking of which, was this your favorite? Yeah? You loved Dog's Body. After I finished reading it, I sobbed and hugged you. Dog's Body is a sci-fi book about an alien who gets accused of a crime he didn't commit and then is sentenced to live out the rest of his life as a dog and if he can't find the weapon that was used in the crime that fell to earth in that time he'll live the rest of his life and die as a dog it's okay the dogs all are showing up to hear this description it's an amazing book it's really really good i want to reread it it just made me cry it's not like once again that sad of an animal book it's very Cool. I love the book. I love the premise behind it. It's really interesting, but yeah, it's just a little sad, but it's cute. And then my number one favorite Diana Wynne Jones books that I've ever read is Fire and Hemlock. Fire and Hemlock is a really complicated story, and it's really funny because I didn't understand most of it. It's my favorite book of hers, and is one of my favorite books in general, and it confused me for the majority of it, which is why I'm planning on rereading it and annotating it this year. I'm also planning on maybe making a video about annotating because it's the first time I've ever done that. But basically, it's based on the ballad of Tam Lin, which is Irish, I think, and then, or maybe it's Scottish, I'm sorry if I'm messing that up, and then it also has uh, influence from Thomas the Rhymer, which is Irish, and I just got that book recently, but basically it's about this young girl who, she befriends this guy, and the two of them start making up this, like, fantasy story in like a book that they're writing, but things from the story keep coming true, and so they have to figure out how to stop it. It's very complicated. Everyone says that you should read it more than like once. <laughs> that book in particular, maybe more than two times even, or three. I am planning on reading it a few times and really dissecting it, but it's a brilliant story that I highly recommend. Um, this, this, the audio on this is gonna be so bad, I'm sorry. But yeah, so that's my number one favorite book. I highly recommend reading but yeah, that was basically ranking all the Diana Wynne Jones books that I've read so far. Once I read more than 10, I can't. <laughs> I'm yelling. Martha! Walter! Adrian, go see them! They love you! Once I've read more of her books, I can either do a like more realistic top 10 list, or I can just rank them all like I did in this video. But yeah, tell me down below what your favorite Diana Wynne Jones book is, if you've read any of them. If any of them sound interesting, let me know. And if you want more content on her super writing, I'll be happy to do that. This is my first real video back and there's dogs barking. Adrian, do you want to say goodbye? She's eating grass. We're gonna go see them. Okay, bye!